or left out there um, in a pasture situation for those horses. If you're going to be using grain, again also we need to make sure that it's a sim relatively simple to feed. Um, you can also also want to make sure that the type of grain you have is safe. Remember with, us, with anything involving cattle we want to avoid rumensin and any ionophores. Also the question if it should be in bulk or bag will be again a management decision. Many times if you have a bulk feeder um, then that would be a more economical way to, to have your grain and to feed your horses. Develop some type of cart that you can easily move the grain around to those horses. Bag feed um, is another option. It can be a little bit more costly than bulk feed. And so again those are management decisions as far as what's going to be suit your, your situation the best and how to handle the grain for your horses. In addition, uh, the method of feeding them grain will vary, again, between your situation and um, what's going to work best for you. You can group feed that grain out in lots. If you do group feed the grain in lots, just be sure that you have um, plenty of bunk space or feeders so the horses can separate out and each consume their own ration of grain, that you do not have one horse that goes in and pushes all the others and over consumes too much grain. Uh, this is a situation where to catch the horses they use some grain and as they're tied the horse up and are getting ready to sell and getting ready to ride are providing some grain in this method. So again, think of different ways that are going to fit your management situation and make it simple and safe to keep those horses fed to the best body condition that they can. One last area to, to visit as far as the feeding is a little bit on wintertime feeding. And just remember that the horses in the wintertime are going to have to have a little bit more increased energy to meet the body needs that they need to maintain their body heat during the cold months. And interesting to note, a lot of folks uh, think about to increase the grain, but on the average, uh, the digestion of forage, the digestion of their hay, is going to produce more body heat then, then will the digestion of their grain. So as we get into the cold times, you will tend to increase the amount of forage, increase the amount of hay that you feed those horses. Then if they're not maintaining their weight, or we get some extreme cold weather, you might at that time need to increase um, a little bit the amount of grain. But we'll first start with increasing the hay, which is not only safer method, but also produces more body heat than the grain. And just two other things to finish up our discussion um, real quick here are just a few things on routine health care for your horses. Again, it's a good idea to consult your local veterinarian with their recommendations, but remember that we do look to have these horses around for extended period of time. A good deworming program is very critical and very important. It will greatly increase um, the utilization of your feed, keep your horses in better body condition than horses that do have um, an excess amount of parasites within them. Most programs now still do recommend that we deworm those horses approximately every two months, particularly in a situation where they're in close content in dry lots or small pens, where we can be pretty much assured that they are having parasites around most all the time. Most practitioners also recommend that you do what we consider a slow rotational program, and this means that you de change the deworming products on an annual basis on a once a year basis. So the, the compound that you use um, is used throughout an entire year, and then the base product of that dewormer is changed. Some warmers are effective against bots and some are not, so we also need to ensure that we do deworm specifically for bots at least twice a year, usually in the fall after the flies are gone, after we've had a killing frost, and then again in the, again in the spring, such as in April, before the flies come up. Some products do get bots annually, and so then that is not as big a concern, but some products are more economical that do not contain um, a botocyte and therefore we do need to be sure that we do um, cover that at least twice a year. A few more things on some routine health care would include a dental care. Uh, have your veterinarian at least once, maybe twice a year go in and check that horse's teeth. If you ever notice a horse that is holding his head off sideways when he's trying to eat and dropping a lot of grain, he suddenly begins to fight the bit um, and is crabby and, and somewhat cantankerous, he might have a dental problem. And so in all horses we really look to have their teeth examined once or twice a year and your veterinarian may need to come in and float those teeth off, teeth off which is basically smoothing off the edges. Um, so that they can chew and utilize their feed really well. 
Again, if you notice grains in the manure, a horse that holds his head off to the side, uh, starts fighting the bit and just isn't themselves, might be an indication that you need to have their teeth floated.